Hey there, hope you're doing well. I'm actually super excited today because we're finally starting a brand new series here on the channel. Some of you guys have been asking for this for quite a while now. And in this series, what we're gonna talk about is how to use Blender to design custom 3D detail parts for your Gunpla kits. So these are things that you could print out on a 3D printer and then use to add detail or cover mistakes or seam lines or things like that on your kits as you build them. We might even at the end of this series look into how to completely replace a piece with something new or custom that you've designed. So we're gonna start simple and then we're gonna add on more detailed and more complicated techniques and skills and see where we can go. But before we get started with the first project, here in this intro episode, I wanted to go through a couple of things in Blender's settings and preferences that I've changed, and so that if you're following along and you want your Blender to look exactly like mine, you can make these changes as well. We're also gonna install a plugin, an add-on for Blender that is gonna be very important and actually crucial to the workflow that we use in these modeling projects. So you'll wanna do that as well. And I'll take you through that in just a couple of minutes here. And then the other thing I wanted to do before we get started is just encourage you to follow along in Blender if you can. I think that the best way to learn these techniques is to do them yourself. And so rather than just watching me go through and make changes and model things, it's best if you can, if you fire up Blender on your own and you follow along, you can always pause the video or re rewind if you get behind and actually do the projects because I think you'll learn a lot more and you'll also be able to play a bit and make changes to what you're doing that are maybe different than what I've shown in the video and create some custom variations of these things as we go through as well. So without any further ado, I'm gonna fire up Blender and I will see you over on the other side of the intro. All right, here we are in Blender with a new empty file loaded. So we've got our default cube and our camera and light here. So this is what you'll see if you've just installed Blender and you're loading it for the first time. And there are a couple of things we wanna change in our preferences. So if we go up to the edit menu and choose preferences, you'll see your, yours will start here on this interface tab. There's a couple of things that I'm gonna change here. You can, if you're in a very high resolution monitor and the whole UI of Blender looks very small, you can change this resolution scale maybe to like 1.25 or 1.5 and you'll see when I do this, everything gets bigger. I'm running at a lower resolution here for recording the video, so I'm gonna leave mine at 1.0 because I think everything's big enough for you guys to see okay. And if it's not, definitely leave me a comment and let me know and I, I can make that bigger. The setting I am gonna change is line width, which is right below that resolution scale. And I'm gonna change it from default to thick. And what that's gonna do is make our grid lines and the edges of objects and all of those kinds of things just a little bit thicker and more prominent on the screen so that we can see things better. Then I'm gonna go down to the themes section and under 3D viewport, I'm gonna make two changes here, again, to make things easier for you guys to see. So under the wire edit color, which by default is this black, I'm gonna make this a very bright blue. So I'm just gonna drag this up and then pick some blue color, maybe like this over here. And that will make, when we go into wireframe mode and we're editing points and edges of things, it'll make those show up a lot brighter and, and easier for us to see. The other thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of this section and somewhere down here, there's a vertex size. And again, this is for wireframe edit mode for the vertices and how big they, how big the dots appear. So I'm gonna push this up to four or maybe even five pixels just to make my vertex dots bigger. Again, so that you guys can see them better on the screen on the recording. So I think those are all the visual changes we're gonna make. Um, before we leave this preferences pane though, we're gonna go over to the add-ons section. And I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video down below to the ND add-on. It's made by some guys called Huge Menace. Uh, it's a ND stands for non-destructive and we'll see what that workflow does for us in upcoming videos. But this is something we're gonna use pretty extensively throughout this series to create and manipulate shapes in our 3D view. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is download the zip file for that plugin, which you'll get to from the description down below, and then hit the install button up here 
and just point it to that zip file that you downloaded. And once you've done that, this 3D view huge menace add-on will appear here in the list. You wanna make sure that it's checked like this. And then I will um, roll this down and show you one change that I've made to the preferences. So under the UI preferences here, the overlay DPI is by default 72. So this overlay, I'll show, you to show it to you in just a second. It's something that shows up next to our mouse cursor when we're doing different operations with ND. And it's a bit small, especially for recording for the video. So I'm actually gonna double this to 144 from the default of 72. Once you've done that, you can click the little hamburger menu down here and choose to save preferences if you'd like. Uh, they should auto save, but sometimes they don't. So I always do that just to be sure and then close the window. So since we were talking about that ND pop-up uh, menu that we changed the DPI for, let me select this cube and I'll just bring up ND real quick. We'll do a bevel operation. So this bunch of text here with all the different parameters for the operation that we're running, that's the thing that we just changed the DPI for to make it nice and big for you guys to be able to see. So that's what that is. All right, now with this cube selected, the last thing I want to do is play around a bit with the units that we see displayed. So if I hit N and I open up the side menu here that shows the details of my cube, you'll see that by default its dimensions are two meters. And I measure things and think about things in millimeters because that's what my digital calipers show me when I'm measuring very small parts for Gunpla and that sort of thing. And so I want to change these from meters to millimeters. And the way to do that over here on the right hand panel is if you pick this icon right here, which is your scene properties, you'll see units and we can toggle that down and you can change from metric to imperial units if you want to, uh, but we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do instead is go down here to the length units and we're gonna change that from meters to millimeters. Now you'll see over here in our cube, it's showing that it's actually 2000 millimeters because that's equivalent to the two, millimeter, to the two meters that we had previously. To fix this, we wanna change our unit scale up here in our unit settings. So instead of 1.0 for meters, we'll go 0 0.001, so a thousand, factor of a thousand less. And now we're back to two millimeters on each side for our cube. So that's good, but it messed up our grid a bit. So up here in the pull down for our viewport, viewport overlays, you can see the grid settings here. And again, the grid has a scale. It's separate from the unit scale that we just changed, but we need to make it the same. So if we go 0.001 here, now our grid comes back to the what we visually what we want to see. So this is good. Now, these scale settings that we just changed don't get saved by Blender by default. They're actually saved as part of your scene. And so in order for these to be persistent and to work when you load a new version of Blender or when you start a new scene, we need to save this. And so what we wanna do is go over to the file menu and go down to defaults and you can save the current file as your startup file. So what this is gonna do is save what we're looking at right now, this camera and light and default cube and all of the unit changes that we just made. And it's gonna save those as the file that Blender starts up with and that gets used whenever we create a new scene. So if I do this, it's gonna ask for confirmation, make sure to click a second time to confirm that. And now this scene with these unit changes is what's going to show up whenever we restart Blender. And we can actually, if we want to go and say new general scene, and we won't save this one. And we'll see that that same settings with our units and such have been loaded. So as a side note, one other thing you can do if you'd like, you can select all of this stuff and delete it and then save this as your default scene. So you don't get that default cube and camera and light as part of your default scene when you start up Blender. So if you wanna start up Blender from a completely clean slate, and I like to do that, so I'm gonna do that here. Save this as my startup file. And now we don't have to delete that default cube every single time we create a new scene. So I think that's everything we need to get started. This will put you on the same playing field that I am as far as a baseline of settings and everything. And next video, we'll get started with doing some real projects. I think it's gonna be vents first, so we'll see how that goes. I'll see you then.